Hello YouTube and welcome in this series that people long thought was dead, People of the Elder Scrolls, the amazingly named series where I analyze one person's lore and then give a summary of it in a video. People thought that this series was dead and nobody wanted me to bring it back, so there was no demand yet I deliver. Today we are going to take a look at Janus Hasseldor, the Count of Skiengrad. He is a very interesting character and possibly one of my favorite characters of the Elder Scrolls universe. So without much further ado, let's immediately kick off with this video on Janus Hasseldor. So, as you know, every county in Cyrodiil is being ruled by a count. They are an important part of the Cyrodiilic government and serve as an important role to boost the morale of the people in hard times. They often appear in public and meet with the people to solve their problems. Except for one count during the late Third Era, Janus Hasseldor, the Count of Skiengrad. Janus Hasseldor is rarely seen in public and visitors to Castle Skiengrad rarely get, a, get to see him and often speak with his advisors and other employees rather than the Count himself. Despite his lack of public appearances, Count Hasseldor is very popular among his subjects as he has kept Skiengrad peaceful and prosperous for many years through hard times. Life is good in Skiengrad and because of that the people are very willing to forgive the fact that their Count is apparently very crowd shy and a fiery private person. This is something you would often hear from the citizens of Skiengrad, as their lives are good and they have a fair ruler. But outsiders would often find it suspicious. Why is Count Skiengrad almost never seen outside of the castle? They would start to wonder if it's really just because he is shy? Well, to understand this so-called crowd shyness, you need to know a little bit about the Count's history. You see, Janus Hasseldor and his wife Rona were attacked by vampires 50 years ago at the time of the Oblivion Crisis. And now he and his wife have been turned into vampires as well. This was a drama for the then already quite successful Count, as making it public would destroy his life and would completely, well, jeopardize his career as a successful public servant. So he decided to keep it secret. The only people that know are close confidants in the castle, some close friends and some former friends, and presumably the Emperor would know as well. You know, they meet with the Emperor very pretty often, the Counts. But I have no information on if the Emperor knew or if the Emperor did not know. After his affliction became apparent, he and his wife led an isolated life in Castle Skiengrad. During this time, the Count would rule through his advisors, who would then execute the orders he gave to them. His advisors would answer the public questions and he remained in the back of the castle, only ca appearing in public in very rare cases and presumably only when it was dark. While the public would become suspicious of why they would never so you see their Count, they would, in the end, begin to accept their Count's so-called crowd shyness, since, well, the Count remained to be a very fair and good ruler, and life in Skiing Red was good and prosperous. But inside the castle, life was less pleasant, as the Count and his wife wanted to look for a cure, but could never find it. And they could not go outside of the castle to look for it out of suspicion. So, Count Hasseldor, in the end, came to the conclusion that it would be best to accept this affliction and embrace the immortality and the powers that came with it. He drank blood only when it was absolutely needed and presumably only when it was voluntarily given. His wife Rona, however, could not accept her affliction and refused to drink the blood needed to keep her going. This resulted in her eventually falling in a deep coma, a sort of limbo between life and death, of which she could not escape and was sustained by the servants of Count Hasseldor. This led Count Hasseldor to keep searching for a cure for his wife so that she may finally find peace. But, unable to leave the castle, there was not much he could do without raising suspicion. Because if he, he, he himself would go out of the castle, well, first of all, people would see him. And they might get more suspicion. And if he would go out searching for a vampire cure, well, I think you can point it together. In his years as a lonely ruler without his wife to accompany him, he, ke he kept governing Skiengrad as the best way he could. Rumors of the Count's affliction would spread around Cyrodiil, but nobody would ever really learn the truth, as Janus was careful with the information he shared. In Skiengrad, however, it's a different story. Its citizens had suspicion, and without a doubt, some people would have come to the right conclusion that he was a vampire, although none of them would get it confirmed, obviously. 
However, the people that would, it would be right in the end would eventually ignore it. As well, when you dig deep enough, you find that Janus truly cares for his people and does what he can for the citizens of County Skiingrad. We don't know how many people know, but nobody in Skiingrad that knows of their leader's affliction would ever betray him. When you ask any of the citizens of Skiingrad about their count's old age, for example, they will just shrug it off as him being a sorcerer and probably having life-extending magic. The citizens accept him for who he is, and they do not betray him, even if they know. And their ruler, well, he rules them fairly and brings them prosperity. However, the rumors of his affliction sometimes attract unwanted visitors, like vampires who expect to have an easy prey in Skiingrad because one of their own rules it, or vampire hunters who follow the aforementioned vampires. Count Hasseldor, however, dismisses them both. He deems other vampires mindless animals that have given into primal instincts and calls vampire hunters predators. And he does not want them around or anywhere inside or outside the city, for obvious reasons. Yet, when either of these factions visits town without doing anything criminal, he cannot really become publicly involved in the matter, as it would draw attention to him if he himself ordered vampire hunters, for example, to stay out of the city. That would be suspicious. He often handles these kinds of situations through third parties. A good example is that during the information and the prize quest in Oblivion, he asks the hero of Kvarts to rid County Skiingrad of a band of vampires, but also makes sure that a group of vampire hunters leave the city. He doesn't really care how you do it, as long as they are gone. However, he warns the player that if he kills any of the hunters in the streets, he will have the guards arresting the, the player and just well, charge them with murder, as you would always do. Because he cannot be brought into connection with the murder of vampire hunters, because then more vampire hunters would come to find out what happened. And if the government was involved. If the hero of Kvarts himself is a vampire and meets the Count under good terms, the hero can aid the Count in trying to find a cure for his wife and, of course, for the hero himself. He then tells the hero the story of how he and his wife were turned 50 years ago and tells how his wife was, is in a coma and he wants to cure Rona so she can finally be at peace. Once a cure has been found, the Count goes to his wife, who lays in, who lays in her bed and is cared for by his servants. He wakes her up and a witch sustains her long enough so that she can drink the, oh, the cure. However, when he, she is cured of her affliction, she dies, but she is finally at peace. After this, the Count grieves, but is happy that his, that his wife finally found peace. And after this, the Count too has had some closure, and he can continue to rule skiing red in peace. What became of Count Hasseldor is actually unknown, we don't know what happened to him. Since he is a vampire we know that he can still be alive by the time of Skyrim, however I don't think that he is still ruling skiing red. It's possible that he still is, and I just don't think it's true. Let me know in the comments what you think that happened to Count Hasseldor, I would love to know what happened to him, because well, we have no clue at all, so any theory is welcome. But if I have to give my own personal opinion slash theory, which isn't really based on anything, but just something that I would want to happen, it seems likely to me that he quietly disappeared after the storm crown, crown interregnum and the dissolution of the Mage's Guild. I think that during this time his old age would have become really suspicious, so he would probably have, well, quietly disappeared. It would be easy for him to just pretend and die in the chaos that followed the Oblivion Crisis and just live, live a peaceful life somewhere in the world where, well, not much attention is drawn to him. Whatever happened to him, I hope that he had a happy ending. If anything, just because he was a good guy. Some people would say that he would, would have to die just because he's a vampire, but I think that examples like Janus Hasseldor or for example Serana from the Dawnguard questline remind us of the fact that, well, vampires too have the possibility to live well, peaceful lives and do good if they overcome their evil nature. So yeah, I just hope that he had a happy ending. But with that said, we have reached the end of this video. If you liked it, like the video of course, subscribe to the channel, maybe click the bell, bell icon if you want to see more lore videos like this one. And for the people interested, in two days from now on Friday the 14th on 10 p.m. Dutch time, which is CET time zone, there's a live lore lecture for my Patreon supporters. So we, go, we all go in a Discord, there I do a live lore lecture, I record everything, then I answer some questions from the crowd which are also answered live on the recording then those questions plus the lecture become one big video like you've seen before on this channel like with the creation in the dawn era next upcoming lecture this friday is on the Meretic era 
uh, which is uh, part one of the Marathic era because I have a lot to talk about. It's going to be a lot about development but also a little bit about history. And well, everybody interested should well subscribe to my Patreon and you will still be able to make the lecture. Just keep in mind that if you decide to come, um, the lecture will also appear on YouTube. The only reason you would want to be there live is so you can ask live questions and have your questions on the video. Uh, I really don't recommend just going to my Patreon because you want to be there because the content will be available to everybody uh, shortly. This is just if you want to support me or if you really want to ask me some questions. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it for today. I will see you all in the next lore video. Bye bye.